Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Oscope Wizard. You have come to the right place if you want to nerd out for a little while. It looks like a couple of people have joined early and were chatting with me. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Mom. Uh, it's good to have you back. We missed you while you were gone. Uh, although I'm glad you got to get out of the house and go enjoy a little vacation. Today, today is Baby Friday, a.k.a. Thursday. Boring, basic. Baby Friday, exciting, something to look forward to. The week is almost over, and we, were, we are almost, almost to the weekend. If you start counting the weekend at Friday, like you should, like all humans should, then we are but one day. And if you start counting the weekend on Baby Friday afternoon, uh, like I think we should probably all lobby for, uh, then we are almost there. We are just one hour away from the afternoon over here on the East Coast of uh, the U.S., um, and it is May the 28th. May the 28th is one day before a very big day in my life. May the 29th is my anniversary to Mrs. Oscope Wizard. We've been married for 21 years, and she knows me very well. And you will notice today I'm dressed a little bit differently than normal, and that is because I have a special shirt. I have a special shirt to debut on the Oscope Wizard. Uh, did I mention my name? I'm Gabe. I'm Gabe the Oscope Wizard. I, sometimes I forget my name, uh, or at least to mention my name. I, I don't know that I've ever actually forgotten my name, uh, but, but I do sometimes forget to mention my name. So, anniversary tomorrow. Here is the shirt. Read it and weep. Resistance is not futile. It's voltage divided by current. Guys, come on. We did, a, we did an Ohm's Law series and this shirt is so perfect. I loved it. I loved it. I love it. Thank you so much. Happy anniversary, babe. 21 years. Uh, here's hoping for another, I don't know, 50? Is that, do people make it to 70 years of age? I guess uh, we, we could. That's not outside of the realm of possibilities. Today, I do have my good and plenties. I have my drink, uh, hipster water here, uh, in orange vanilla. If you guys haven't tried the orange vanilla polar water, uh, and if you have not tried polar water, then you are missing out. Orange vanilla is unequivocally, unequivocally the best flavor. There are other flavors, but orange vanilla hits a perfect note. Uh, so I am advocating to try the seltzer water and get specifically the orange vanilla flavor. While I got you here, I forgot to do it the other day, but I mentioned that we were listening to Barbershop. I also mentioned that I did Barbershop Quartet. Actually, I, I mentioned it in the chat. I don't know that I mentioned it in real life, but in the chat, I mentioned that I sang, perhaps embarrassingly so, Barbershop Quartet in high school. I uh, was in the literary team, on the literary team, and I sang in the boys' quartet, and I sang baritone, not bass, but baritone. It was a lot of fun. Barbershop's a lot of fun to sing. Uh, kind of nerdy to listen to, but my Uncle Harold, my great Uncle Harold, who has since passed, left me a bunch of records, and one of the records he left was Barbershop, the Buffalo Bills, <laughs> specifically, it calls out with banjo. With banjo. I, I mean, it was like, let's take barbershop. Let's take the beauty and nerdiness of barbershop and raise it a banjo. I, I mean, it's, it's out, of, out of control. Out of control. Uh, I will say B-side on this record, if you do find it, is a little better than A-side. A-side features the banjo. I don't like the banjo with the barbershop because I feel like that takes a little bit away from the beautiful harmonies of the barbershop. B-side, more traditional barbershop. So anyway, they're trying to branch out with barbershop. Keep it simple, guys. Keep it simple. Respect the tradition, the vocal tradition of male harmony. Apparently sitting around in a barbershop. Ah, uh, let's see. What is the chat telling me? Uh, I th my mom is extolling the virtues of my barbershop singing. Um, 
One of the things that's been a little bit frustrating on the channel, spe speaking of audio in particular, is I have a lot of trouble syncing the audio with the video. I have trouble making the audio sound good. I recorded an episode where the audio crunched and lost and dropped out for an entire 30 minutes. And bless y'all's heart, y'all didn't even let me know, y'all just let me do it. And then promptly disliked the video about eight times, so I, um, I actually went and recorded a replacement video for that episode yesterday and posted it. Um, but I have actually recorded audio and music professionally for a lot of years. I, I haven't done it in a few years, but for many years up to that, I did it to a very high level. And still, still yet, when you change one variable, and this is a very important, an important um, thing to learn when you are diagnosing problems. When you change one variable, it changes the entire system. And you basically have to, if, you ha if something breaks, you have to break it all back, break the whole thing back down, break your entire system back down to the studs, to the base, and build it back up uh, and understand each part individually. So, I, in that spirit, I have broken my entire camera setup down. I've returned a whole bunch of stuff today. It's sitting out in the driveway, heading back, uh, because one of the th hard things to do um, as a grown-up is to admit when you have made a mistake. And I made some mistakes in purchasing the equipment that I purchased. I was trying to make it work. I couldn't make it work. So I've, I've, I've just punted, I guess. And, and I'm admitting the mistake live here in front of you guys, in front of literally dozens of humans. Maybe dozens is an aggressive number. Uh, twos, twos of humans. Um, and I am trying to break the whole thing back down to the base. Uh, KISS, I'm trying to live by KISS, keep it simple stupid. That is a real struggle for me because I want to keep it complicated beautiful, not simple stupid. Um, so we're back to a, a basic camera, basic mic, basic things that I have owned for many years and understand. And hopefully if I can get this to work, then I can slowly build back up and make it complicated beautiful again. In that vein, in that vein, we are going to move over. That was chit chat. Uh, first of all, oops. Oh my gosh. You're 21 minutes today. 21 minutes. I'm eight minutes in. We're not going to take too long. Uh, but in that same vein, we're back to the audio amplifier. So this is the audio amplifier that we discussed earlier on the show. Um, same one. Same one that I got from eBay for. $8.55. Same one that the data sheet said was 50 watts by two. Same one that the eBay listing had at 150 watts by two. In the last episode, we really, we dove deep into the data sheet. We did some maths, which is never very exciting. Although, I mean, it depends. I mean, we did get to see that new program from Blockpad, uh, which is a really cool uh, online math equation editor that, that was also a word processor, which I really like and I'll probably use in the future. Um, but we typed in some equations. We figured out, we figured out that at 12 volts, the most power that I could expect to get out of this little amplifier right here was not 150 watts by two. It wasn't even 50 watts by two. It was actually, I think eight watts by two at 12, 12 volts which is the power supply that I have. So I have two power supplies today. I have my test equipment power supply. So this is my lab equipment power supply that you would pay lots of money for, an NGL202. Very popular power supply in lots of labs everywhere. Let's get a little close up here that, so you can see um, the 202. It's a two output power supply. Um, it is uh, fairly powerful. I think it can do six amps. Although that is five volts and below, and we talked a little bit about how data sheets can be tricky. Once you go above five volts, it'll do three amps. So that means it will do uh, 12 volts, three amps, which is 36 watts. And if my output only does eight watts at uh, eight watts per channel, 16 watts total at um, eight ohms uh, and 12 volts, then I have plenty of power coming out of my NGL. I also have this other power supply, which is a little bit more exciting. This is a mean well power supply. So that is a 
uh, generic Chinese power supply that I bought off of eBay a couple of years ago for a DIY CNC router that I created. And we are going to compare the noise level from the mean well to the, on the power, just on the power rail, very basic noise on a power rail. And we are going to see how much noise gets from the power connector out to the speaker output. So is any noise transferred from here to here? We will find out. We will find out. In uh, the other measurement equipment that I have is my handy ZPR power rail probe. So this is how I'm going to actually measure the power rail. It uh, um, ha has up to 60 volts of offset and a lot of sensitivity. You can crank it way down so you can see very tiny noise. Um, and for the output stage, I wasn't sure exactly what the voltage levels were gonna be on my speaker output, but speaker output is a differential output. And uh, oddly enough, the only differential probe that I have handy right now is my huge high voltage ZHD uh, 1500 volt differential probe. It's the ZHD, what is it? The ZHD 16 uh, 1500 volt power or differential probe. The, the speakers will not get to 1500 volts, but they are differential, so I thought that I would use a differential probe because I don't want to mess, uh, I don't want to ground one of the sides of the speakers, it'll cause trouble. Um, everybody following along? Any questions? It's a weird time to ask questions, uh, but, but you are welcome to. The first thing that I need to do, uh, besides take a, take a quick drink of water, uh, orange vanilla, awesome, is hook my power rail probe up. So today I'm using this end uh, adapter. So I have a fairly short ground lead. It's a pin uh, ground lead. And then I have just the signal pin exposed. And I'm going to just stick the ground into the power supply, into the ground side of the power supply and the signal into the hot side of the power supply, so the voltage side of the power supply. And once I get all that connected, I am going to use my probe holder to hold it. So this is another spot. I've mentioned the probe holder before. I mean, um, I cannot overstate the usefulness, in my opinion, of a probe holder. They are just so handy to have that extra set of stability when you're trying to do other things with your hands, like run a webcast or press a button. All the things that you, know, you could normally do if you had a buddy there to help you. But unfortunately, in the lab, a lot of times you don't have your buddy there to just like press. Actually, also, your buddy might not be too excited about holding his fingers so close to a power supply. He's probably like, uh, yeah, I don't want to die today. Buddies. Buddies with their desire for life. Come on, buddies. Get braver. Get braver. So there we go. So we have my probe plugged into my power supply. Can everybody see? Um, oh, there was, oh, there are some experts. The, oh, so, so somebody asked, two questions came in. There are some experts, it was mentioned. Don't forget to preset the scope. That's right, mom. You're getting to be a scope expert. Before you know it, you are going to have a job in a lab somewhere using oscilloscopes with knowledge like that. And then the second question was, will I measure the efficiency of the amplifier? Now, I probably could. I probably could. I won't today, but I could. I have the ability to measure the voltage, I can measure the current, and I can measure the output voltage and current and see how much of the current, because efficiency is all about getting as much power from the input to the output without losing it to heat. So we should probably be able to do that, I think. Uh, so now, I, for my differential probe, I have these giant, huge Frankenstein-style leads it's all I got, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm a big use the appropriate tool for the job, and here I am not using the appropriate tool for the job. I'm using the tool I have on hand, which is the other edict that drives engineering. All about compromises, right? All about compromises, trying to get it um, 
as good as we can. So now I have both um, the power supply and the speaker output probed on uh, with my oscilloscope probes on channels one and two. I'm going to turn on the current or turn on the output and see if the smoke gets out. No smoke. No smoke. We are in business. We could we could actually play songs. It was funny. In um one of the episodes, I played some uh music for like a, a split second, and YouTube was able to to hear that and flag that content. Like so I probably need to load up my own music onto my phone to play it so that I don't ruin my stream. Okay, now that I have it all plugged in, you can see the power supply is supplying some power. Let's check out the noise on this power supply. So this is a very basic measurement of voltage. Um, switch over to my oscilloscope. Bring my scope screen up so that I can control it. You're right, mom. Step one, preset setup. We'll just preset right here. We don't need to do factory defaults, but boom. Channel one on, channel one's off the screen uh, because why is it off the screen? Does anybody know? Um, here's a hint, it's looking at a power supply uh, and uh, on my scale over here, I can see that what's displayed on the screen is from minus 250 millivolts to plus 250 millivolts. But, but I know that the power supply I'm using is. The weird thing about live streaming is you can't tell me. You can only type it, and you're probably like 20 seconds behind me. What's the power supply? Uh, does anybody remember? Oh, here we go. Here we go. My buddy, Mr. Rodriguez, throwing it in there. 12 volts, you're right, DC offset. Yo, yo. Okay. I'm gonna turn on my probe meter. And my probe meter tells me, hey, your signal's up at 11.991 volts. That is good. That is what I set it to. Uh, there is some genius. Power supply is 5 volts. Oh, come on. Come on, Mr. White. You've been watching this stream. You've seen every episode. The power supply is clearly 12 volts. Uh, so here we are. Here's the power supply um, that I'm looking at. My power rail probe is set to 3.5 gigahertz, uh, which may be too much bandwidth. And the reason I say it's too much bandwidth uh, to use for this measurement is because the noise that I'm concerned with is noise that I can hear with my ear holes. The human ear cannot hear 3.5 gigahertz. I don't know that there is any ear that can hear 3.5 gigahertz. I, I, um, I was going to do a quick check here. So let's figure out what is the, let's see, the range of human hearing in hertz? 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Um, what that tells me is I can't hear anything much beyond 20 kilohertz. And based on some measurements I did over the weekend, I think my hearing might be limited, my personal hearing might be limited to about 18 kilohertz. Although, just because you can't hear it well doesn't mean it doesn't make an impression on your brain. There's uh, harmonics can uh, get in there through the tiny little bones in your ear. Um, but what it does mean for my noise measurement is that I'm mostly interested in frequencies from 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz. Hertz. Hertz do hurt. Hertz can hurt. Um, and uh, another thing to note when I say 20 kilohertz is you'll notice, uh, does anybody know the frequency uh, that compact discs are digitized at? Does anybody know that answer? I'm gonna keep going. Um, we'll come back to the scope. And if you don't know the answer, I'll tell you the answer. I'll just wait to see if you do know the answer. Um, 
I want to trigger on my signal. So let's move my trigger level up here. Boom. Now I found a noise signature. Uh, I probably, you can see that the signal's a little bit off the screen, so let's make it a little bit uh, less sensitivity. Um, here we go, 44 kilohertz, that's right, 44 kilohertz. 44.1, in fact, the microphone that I'm using today is being digitized at a rate of 44.1 kilohertz. That was decided in CDs, and the reason they chose 44 kilohertz is because it is two times the absolute limit of human hearing of about 22 kilohertz. The reason that they had to, to digitize it at twice of the frequency, the frequency that they want to recreate is because of Fourier's law. Uh, he said, is, it, is that right, Fourier? Said that we have to digitize things twice the rate that we want to see them. And I was thinking that I should probably do a little, uh, a little story on Fourier, it won't happen today, but I do have plans to talk about him. He's a big part of um, modern measurement technique. Oh, Nyquist, sorry, Nyquist. Thank you, Mr. White, Nyquist, Nyquist theory. Oh my goodness. Electrical engineering professors all over the world are rolling around on the floor. Um, Fourier tells me how to go from the time domain to the frequency domain, also very important. Nyquist tells me that I need to digitize things twice the rate that I want to see. And, oh my goodness, Professor Krim, ignore that. If you ever watch this, ignore that. I, I didn't say it. You'd be so disappointed. Spent five years, or three years trying to teach me engineering, and here I am screwing it up. Um, okay, so here's some noise. Here's the noise signature that I see on my power supply. Right now, it just looks like noise. If I zoom, let's zoom out a little bit more and see if anything jumps out at us. Okay, so one of the things that I note from this signal, it is highly periodic, meaning that it repeats over and over again. I can see the same pattern over and over again. If I just throw a couple of cursors onto my scope, I can check what the period is. I can see the period is about 1.2 microseconds or 805 kilohertz. Let us zoom back in a little bit. Get a better idea of exactly what the uh, period is. Let's see, 815 kilohertz. Does that make sense? Could be. Could be the switching frequency of our power supply. Um, what I want to do now is do an FFT. I want to do Fourier transform. So I'm going to take it from the time domain into the frequency domain. Over here in the frequency domain, I can see more information about the noise. So it's going to make a little bit more sense to me. I move my cursor over here. I can see that cursor two in the frequency domain is at 2.4 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz. We're going to ignore that band because that band is Wi-Fi and I got Wi-Fi flying everywhere. What I'm more interested in is the bands down here. So this is 568 megahertz. 568 megahertz. 570 megahertz is the frequency that my wireless mic, can you see my, my wireless mic is transmitting at 570 megahertz. So that is all being um, caught by my long wires and my test setup. Uh, from my wireless transmissions in my lab. But what I'm really interested in isn't really these high frequencies because can I hear 2.4 gigahertz? Can I hear that with my ear holes? Anybody? Anybody? Y'all are very quiet. In fact, y'all look like a camera. But the answer is no, no, you can't hear that. You can't hear 570 megahertz either. So I'm going to go to my Fourier transform for my FFT, my Fourier transform, and I'm going to lower the stop frequency. So I'm going to lower the upper frequency band that it's going to look at. And I'm going to lower it down to say, um, I'm really interested in like kilohertz of band. So if I go down here to just a megahertz, 
So a megahertz would be an incredible digitizer for audio. Um, and there are some one megahertz DACs. That's a big thing. So go, to going from analog back to digital, they'll digitize it at, at uh, one megahertz, and that'll keep more of the harmonics. Uh, but for digitizing the audio, the highest digitizers are usually 96 kilohertz. Um, yeah. So let's move this up a little bit so that we can see it. Oh, now I'm dragging the whole thing. Nope. Nope. Here we go. Let's turn this to audio. Auto. Maybe we'll manual up. You can see it moving up in the background. There we go. Here we go. So here's our noise signature from DC to a megahertz. I'm going to delete. Uh, I don't need that set of cursors. I don't need C1. And I, I'm going to delete all my cursors. And let's just turn some cursors on for uh, M2 or M1, my, my uh, FFT. Here we go. Here we go. So I can see I have a couple of spikes on my power supply. One at 374. What is this? Uh, no. This is 100, so I'm looking right here, 175 kilohertz, uh, a little bit beyond my human hearing, uh, 270 kilohertz, way up here at 401 kilohertz, and then I have another big spike out here, probably at 800, yeah, 800 kilohertz. So this spike, this spike actually looks like the fundamental, or perhaps it is something that just repeats every 400 kilohertz. Uh, it kind of goes with the repetition that we were seeing before of 800 kilohertz. Um, now, so this is the noise signature on my power supply. My question was, how much of that is getting out to my speaker? So if I go to channels, turn on channel 2. So here is channel 2. I'm going to drastically drop the bandwidth on this guy. Uh, so on the actual probe itself, there's a button that allows me to limit the bandwidth to 5 megahertz. I can also change the range. So now you can see that I have a much more sensitive probe because I'm ignoring a lot of the high frequency noise, which I don't really care about. Um, and I can get down here to 50 millivolts of division, which is the limit on this 1.5 kilovolt probe. Super overkill. Um, but it is what it is. So now I want to do an FFT of channel 2. Um, this FFT, look, it's using the colors, Mom. Uh, we're going to set it up the same way that we have the other FFT down here set up. How do we have it set up? One kilohertz. So resolution bandwidth of one kilohertz. Um, and then we can actually put these two FFTs side by side. We can put these two FFTs side by side. There we go. There you guys go. Oh my gosh. Scare me to death. Five minutes remaining. A little sprinkler trampoline work on a baby Friday. Hey guys, five minutes remaining. So let's, uh, let's start wrapping up a little bit. See if we can make some conclusions. Is the power supply noise being fed from the power supply out to the speaker? That would be, eh. Not great. Uh, as long as it's not in the audio range, though, I don't really care that much. Uh, so, back, back to the scope we go. Um, let's see. Before I get too far into it, uh, if I was an Arquilian, Arquilian warrior, you could hear 2.4 gigahertz. That's, that is true. That is true. But I'm, I'm not, thankfully. I think that might not, not mean a... I think that might mean I'm not an earthling. Um, one of the questions, A minus 6 is up. Hmm, that one's getting me. And here we go. The, oh, 
Now, Mr. White noticed that the two primary peaks are nearly the same level, but here we go. I have a peak right here at 400 kilohertz on, um, this is on my power supply. And over here on my speaker output, the 800 kilohertz is damp. So it's not really the, it's not passing all the noise from the power supply out to the speaker. It's doing, it's doing a good job of cleaning up the noise. What you want to see from your amplifiers is for it not to pass noise on the power supply out to your output. You want it to clean the noise of the power supply up, um, either through board design or clever um, chip design. There's a bunch of different things on the board that you can do to try to clean up power supply noise and make sure it doesn't get to the output. Now, the other thing I need to do with these FFTs is probably, first of all, I need to stop sampling it at 10 giga samples a second because that just makes it crazy. So let's, <laughs> let's turn it down a little bit from 10 gigas. You see it gets a lot faster. So we're not 10 giga samples a second anymore, um, which is good because that's silly. Um, uh, and also way overkill. If I'm looking at a megahertz, 10 giga samples a second, that's like, um, I don't know, what is that? What equivalency would that be? Way overkill. We call it killing a gnat with an atom bomb. That'll kill the gnat. It'll also kill a lot of the other stuff. Um, let's make the stop frequency 40, uh, 44 kilohertz. And let's change the colors on M1 to use a color table so it fits a little bit prettier. Yeah make it false colors this looks a little prettier i think i think it does look down here this is pretty awesome so down here on my power supply what is my what's the min resolution bandwidth i can set Whew. i have gone a little too aggressive i am afraid sometimes when you get too aggressive on your um <laughs> on your resolution bandwidth settings, it can make the calculation a wee tad slow. And I believe that I may have done that. We can see that, well, I've grabbed 6.8 seconds of time, which means that it's gonna take at least 6.8 seconds to show. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's make that less time. Make that less time. Whoops. Whoop, that's a whoopsie. My bad, guys. My bad. Can we get this back up? Here we go. Here we go. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. Look at this power supply. So this power supply going from 0 to 44 kilohertz. I mean, sweet mercy. It is flat, which is gorgeous. Um, the output on the speaker... I do the same thing, 44 kilohertz, so human hearing, um, and then down to, what did I do? I think I did 10 hertz, is that right? Yeah, boom, flat. With nothing being played on the speaker, totally flat. Now, if I played something on the speaker, let's see, I'm gonna hook it up as a real quick test. Last thing we'll do today is, whoops, we will pop the power supply there a little around, yeah. A little bit, little bit of power supply pop. Let's play something, just anything really. I can play that video that I was playing earlier of the uh, the jumping. Here we go. Oh man. Okay. Cancel. Let's just go to this. There you go. Here we go, so we have the video playing. You can see it pop up on the FFT here. So if I just play, you can see, yeah. So the microphone actually stops picking stuff up at 22 kilohertz. So I have this set to 44 kilohertz, but I noticed that I'm not getting any information out above Let's see, whatever this point was. So let's see where this point was. 
Well, I don't know what I did. Did I? Maybe I made it too quiet. I've done something to it. I'm not sure what. Um, but about 22 ki 20 kilohertz is is uh, actually it was going to about 10 kilohertz. So that the microphone on the iPhone was, is only digitizing up to about 10 kilohertz. Um, anyway, what do we think, guys? Pretty good for a, so we're, I mean, with the bench supply, very quiet, not, no noise is being transmitted from the power supply out to the speaker. Beautiful amp design. Now, on Tuesday, we're going to figure out whether or not the same can be said for my mean, well, cheap, generic 5 volt or 12 volt power supply that I bought to drive a CNC router. Uh, so a totally different uh, goal when I purchased the power supply, but it does have up to 30 amps. So it was a 360 watt power supply, very high wattage, very small. It's a very compact power supply. We're gonna check the noise out on that guy and see if it is as quiet as my perfectly flat NGL202. Thank you guys for joining on a Baby Friday. I really appreciate it. Um, join me again on Tuesday. I don't know all the nerds in the world, but I would love to meet them. So please share this with a nerd in your life and join me again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. This will probably be flagged now because I said that. I'm going to hang out in the chat and chat for a little bit with you guys. That's a lot of chats. Um, but I'll see you guys later. Bye.